Welcome back to History of Simple Things. Today's topic comes from one of our viewers, Avogrado7257. Thanks for the suggestion. You asked, how is industrial grease made and what exactly is it? If you've ever peeked under the hood of a car, worked around heavy machinery, or even just heard a squeaky hinge go silent after a dab of that mysterious goo, you've had a brush with industrial grease. It's thick, it's sticky, and it's absolutely essential for keeping the world's machines moving smoothly. But how does this peculiar substance come to life? What's actually in it? And why can't we just use regular oil instead? Stick around as we uncover the sticky science and surprising process behind industrial grease right here on History of Simple Things. Let's start by clearing up a common misconception. Grease isn't just thick oil. Well, actually, it sort of is, but with a twist. Think of it as a hybrid. Grease is made by combining a base oil with a thickener and adding performance-enhancing additives. The base oil could be mineral-based, synthetic, or even bio-based, depending on the application. The thickener? That's typically a metallic soap or complex compound that gives grease its signature texture, something between peanut butter and clay. It doesn't run like oil because it's designed to stay put. You don't want it dripping out of a bearing halfway through a shift in a steel mill, right? Grease is meant to hang in there, to stick to metal surfaces and provide lubrication over long periods under extreme conditions. Now, making grease isn't as simple as tossing some oil and soap into a big pot and giving it a stir. It's a surprisingly delicate process, more chemistry than cooking, though it does take place in giant mixers that resemble oversized blenders. First, it all starts with the base oil. This oil is pumped into large stainless steel reactors, basically industrial-sized kettles. Depending on the grease formula, this base oil can be thick or thin, and it might be mineral-based for general-purpose grease, or synthetic for high-performance applications like aerospace or high-speed bearings. Once the oil is in, it's time to add the thickener. This is where the magic really begins. Let's say we're making a lithium-based grease, which is one of the most common types out there. To do that, manufacturers add lithium hydroxide and a fatty acid, often 12-hydroxysteric acid, into the oil. When heated and mixed, these ingredients undergo a chemical reaction called saponification. Yes, it's basically soap making on an industrial scale. The result is a soap-like substance suspended in oil, creating that semi-solid texture that defines grease. Temperature control during this stage is absolutely crucial. Too hot and the reaction might go out of control. Too cold and the saponification won't complete properly. Most greases are cooked at temperatures between 160 degrees Celsius to 200 degrees Celsius. The operators, often chemical engineers or highly trained technicians, monitor the reaction closely, adjusting the heat and mixing speed to get the consistency just right. This part of the process can take hours, depending on the type and complexity of the grease being made. The goal is to fully convert the fatty acids and hydroxides into a uniform, stable thickener dispersed evenly throughout the oil. Once the base grease, meaning the thickened oil, is ready, it's time to boost its performance. This is where additives come in. Think of them as vitamins for grease. Different machines and environments have different needs. Some greases need to resist extreme heat, some have to endure heavy loads, and others need to resist water washout or oxidation. To achieve these qualities, formulators blend in additives like anti-wear agents, corrosion inhibitors, tackifiers to make the grease stickier, and sometimes even solid lubricants like molybdenum, disulfide, or graphite. These tiny particles embed themselves into metal surfaces, creating a microscopic layer of protection that can withstand even metal-on-metal -metal contact. 
This blending stage is delicate. Add too much of one additive, and you can throw off the balance of the entire formula. It's also the stage where colorants and dyes might be added, not for function, but for identification. Different greases are often color-coded, red for high temp, blue for marine, green for biodegradable, and so on. Before any grease leaves the plant, it has to pass a battery of tests. And we're not just talking about eyeballing it and saying, yup, looks good. Industrial grease is tested for things like consistency, penetration, how firm or soft it is, dropping point, the temperature at which it turns to liquid, water resistance, oxidation stability, and more. One common test involves a cone-shaped penetrometer that measures how deep it sinks into a grease sample. This gives a standard reading of consistency, rated by what's called the NLGI grade. Grade 2 is most common. It's like peanut butter. Grade 0 is more like mayonnaise. Grade 6? Think stiff modeling clay. Another fascinating test is the four-ball wear test. It's exactly what it sounds like. Four steel balls, one on top of three others, are bathed in grease and pressure is applied while the top ball spins. Afterward, technicians measure how much wear occurred. Less wear, better grease. Once the batch clears all tests, it's time for packaging. Grease can be packed into all sorts of containers, tubes, drums, cartridges, pails, even automatic lubrication systems that keep massive factory machinery greased in real time. Grease can be sensitive to contamination, so it's usually packed in airtight, moisture-resistant containers under controlled environments to prevent degradation during storage or transport. So now you know how industrial grease is made, but why should you care? Because grease is one of those unsung heroes of the modern world. Without it, planes wouldn't land safely, wind turbines wouldn't spin, and your car would probably squeak like a rusty swing set every time you turned the wheel. It reduces friction, minimizes wear, and extends the life of expensive machinery. In industries like mining, construction, food processing, even nuclear power, having the right grease can mean the difference between smooth operations and catastrophic failure. So next time you see a giant excavator or a humming wind turbine, take a second to appreciate the greasy little secret making it all possible. Because in the world of machines, it's not always the flashy parts or the big engines that matter most. Sometimes it's the humble, sticky stuff behind the scenes that really keeps the world turning. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.